What is up everyone? Welcome to another super sampling video. Going to be a bit more specific with this one. We're going to be doing super sampling for Elite Dangerous. Now I know I've already done an Elite Dangerous video, but since I did that video obviously all the super sampling stuff came about and I have spent basically an entire day trying to get the best out of this game, maintaining the 90 FPS frame rate uh, that you require for VR and getting the best graphics that you can possibly get out of the game. So we're going to do this in reverse. I'm going to show you what the game looks like. We're going to I'm going to do a few training missions just to give you a quick idea of how how it's all looking. And I can tell you now it it's freaking amazing. And then at the end of the video, I'll take you through the boring stuff how to actually make your game look like this. So, let's just jump into this straight away and get this video moving, because it's going to be pretty long. Um, so, we're just going to jump straight into training. And I'll start off, I'll, I'll show you an asteroid belt. I can immediately tell you that uh, everything in the cockpit is now readable. <laughs> this is my first time using the super sample option. Whoa. Bam. Wow, that's, uh, this is looking much better. That info screen's perfectly readable now. Everything's readable, actually. I can go through all my, uh, yeah, that, that is, that's freaking astonishing. I mean, it's probably not going to translate on the monitor that well, because it's still not native resolution, but... But yeah, this is an absolute night and day difference between what it was before and how it is now. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And I say that a lot, but... <laughs> Woo! I know I'm running reduced graphics settings, but honestly, not even noticing it. All I am noticing is how clear everything is now. Would it be nice to turn the graphics options up? Sure, but whoa, it's not gonna happen. Not yet anyway. Oh my God, the realism is just astonishing. It feels so good. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. these asteroids ever crash into each other? I've never seen that happen. Far out. Oh, you can even see the glass of the cockpit. The canopy. It looks amazing. Couldn't see that before. You know, it's just, this atmosphere, it's just amazing. You can just, you can just cruise and just look. It feels like you're in the ship. God, it just, you can't describe it. it it's just, it's just nuts. Wow. Holy crap! Oh crap! Oh! <laughs> Lucky this is only a training mission. Alright, let's jump into a battle. See how that's looking. But, <laughs> look how clear that is! Let's try skirmish. Ooh. Looks like a cool ship. Wow! Holy shit! Destroy hostile ships. This I can do. Wowzers. Yep, this is, um, immersive as hell. 
It's like a target. You are my target. Hard points. Whoa! at the cockpit! <laughs> wow! Look at this thing! Oh, I gotta get the sun in here. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Oh my god. No, I don't want to fight, I just want to look at the sun. Where's the sun going? Oh, that's it there. Not really sun. Look at that! Yes! All right, let's do this. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Absolutely massive. Target destroyed. Woo. That was awesome. <laughs> Let's have a look at the cockpit. Wow. Can have a co-pilot on this one. Don't know what ship this is. Yep, I like it. Let's do one more. All right, here we go. Whoa, nice ship. Is it the same ship? No, it's different. Wow, great canopy on this one. Quad lasers. Oh, oh, that planet is nuts. Yes! Fuck! That ship's fast! Yep, he's a quick one. I cut him in half. I don't think he's got any shields. Shit! hit. What the hell happened then? He's gone. Where are we going? Target destroyed. Here we go. Shit. Yes. 
Jesus. So I'm just going to start at the top with this and we'll go through exactly what you need to get it all done. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off a setting in Steam VR so we can actually see the correct frame rate that you're getting in game. So if we go into Steam VR, we go to settings, there's an option here called allow reprojection. Now if this setting's enabled, what basically happens is if you drop below 90 frames a second, Steam VR will re-render frames, it will use existing information to try and fill in those gaps to maintain that 90 FPS target. Now generally that's fine, you want to leave that on because it guarantees you that you'll probably get a good experience even if you go below 90 FPS. What does happen though is if this is enabled and you're doing some frame rate testing, if you go below 90, basically what happens is it reads 45 FPS and it just sits there. Unless it goes above 90 again, then it goes back up to the 90 cap. So to actually see what your frame rate is, you want to turn that setting off and reboot Steam VR. Oh, sorry, relaunch Steam VR. And then you get an accurate idea of how close you are to that 90 FPS target. You might only be 5 frames a second off, but if you're reading 45 all the time, you've got no idea what's actually happening. So yeah, normally that's on by default and you'll hit that 90 FPS cap and if you don't see that, you'll see 45. They're the only two numbers you'll see. So leave that off for now and you'll be able to see exactly what your frame rate is. Now, for actually seeing what my frame rate is, I'm using EVGA Precision, uh, which is an overclock utility, but it does have some monitoring settings here and it allows you to actually see what is happening in game. And uh, it doesn't actually show up in the VR headset, but it shows up on my monitor preview, which is really handy. And yeah, so got your frame rate, got all your stats, everything like that. So it's always good to have something like this running so you can see exactly what performance you're getting out of the game. Right, so these are my settings. Um, so basically you need a program called ED Profiler for Elite Dangerous. This allows you to configure all the advanced graphics options. Normally in Elite Dangerous you only get your high, low, ultra settings, your VR high, low, and all those settings just don't do the job. You need a utility to customize everything manually, and it just makes things so much better. So everything's pretty standard on here, you don't really need to worry about anything on that side. These are the main graphics settings that we're playing around with. Now I used um, Medium as a template and then I worked from there. So, basically I've changed quite a few things. So, my draw distance at 100%, I found I can get away with that quite easily. It doesn't affect anything. Texture quality doesn't seem to affect performance that much either, so I set that to the highest setting. Shadow quality was a massive hit to performance. So, it was sort of the breaking point between having 90 frames a second and not having 90 frames a second. And... Probably the biggest hit you'll take is if it's an indoor environment like a space station. So anyone who knows Elite Dangerous, there's sort of two environments. You've got your space environments and you've got your space station indoor environments. The space station seems to be the biggest challenge when it comes to getting the performance. Um, so generally if you can get away with a space station getting 90 frames a second, you're going to be fine when you're out in space, even if you're in asteroid fields and things like that. So I generally work off the indoor environments for my testing to see how things perform. Uh, Anti-aliasing, I use SMA. A few people have different opinions on this. I find it's marginally better than the other ones and not really a big impact on performance. So I stick with that. Super sampling, 1.0. A lot of people say use 0 0.65, but I haven't noticed any difference with it. So use whatever one you're happy with, but I find 1.0 doesn't have any impact on performance. 
Uh, ambient occlusion, so I got that on low. Um, it was a decent frame rate of hit, setting that to medium, so I've just left it on low. Um, environment quality, medium, seemed fine with that setting. FX quality, so that's on medium. I sort of had to go between low and medium for testing with that, and that was sort of my breaking point, but it seems to perform really well at the moment, so I'm sticking with that. Reflections low, had to stick with that. Uh, material quality, medium's fine. Uh, galaxy map quality, that's an important one because the galaxy map seems to lag the VR headset out quite a bit, so make sure you have that on a low setting. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much every, every setting you need to get the job done. So this is with a 980 Ti. See how your performance goes with it. And this is with a super sampling setting of 2. Now, I tested 2.5. And as you can see in this video, it's just too demanding. You can't do it. I don't even think a Titan X or a 1080 Ti when it eventually launches is going to be able to handle this setting. It's just insane the amount of uh, resources it requires. Now in this first example, as you can see, you know, frame rate's not what we want. We're sitting at about 60 FPS when we need to be at 90. So this is an example of pushing things too far, and this is with the shadow quality and ambient occlusion turned up. And these are the settings I had to dial back to achieve the frame rate target that I needed. And this is an indoor environment, so this is, a, like I was saying, a really good example of how much more demanding it is than being out in, you know, out of space. Uh, couple of good things though, the GPU clock is maxed out, it's not throttling back, which means the uh, GPU is being fully utilized and you know there's no bottlenecks or anything like that in the system we just simply don't have the graphics grunts to get the job done okay so here we are with my ideal settings everything's finished up and this gives you an idea of what you should be looking at so you can see our 90 fps target it's capped there it's sitting there it's not dropping below which is what's really important it's okay if you drop below 90 fps briefly here and there when you're turning your head and things like that because the 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 reprojection will kick in and fix that up for you, but you have to be above that 90 FPS target the majority of the time. You can't afford to drop below that because it just doesn't end well when it comes to getting motion sickness and things like that. Uh, other than that, everything else is good. Um, I hope you guys find this guide useful. If you have a 980 Ti or, I don't know, a 1070 graphics card, it'll probably be a good equivalent to that. And yeah, give these settings a go. I hope it improves your Elite Dangerous experience. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.